There we go. We're live! Hey everyone, I'm Kim from A Camera A Dream, and with me is Charles. Say hi, Charles. Hi, Charles. <laughs> and Josh. Uh, we're doing Josh's pricing review today. Say hi, Josh. Hello. <laughs> Josh, tell us where you're from. So I'm based out of Greenville, South Carolina, down here in the, the beautiful south. So. The southern uh, mountains, it's beautiful there. Oh, uh, we get spoiled, and I get to shoot up in Asheville a uh, lot, and then you got, you know, you can be skiing in three hours, and you can be at the beach in three hours, so it's, okay. it's pretty awesome. So. Awesome. Well, we got yeah. your uh, we got your price review. You know, we we talked a little bit before the broadcast. To, um, <laughs> it's just a few technical difficulties, but we got it worked out. Don't worry. <laughs> photographers, we know how to fake our way through this shit. So, um, right. <laughs> but we, um, Josh, it was one of the people who won our our pricing review, and he asked us a really good question. He's like, "So, what are you guys doing with this?" And we're like, "Well, we don't really know. I mean, we get a lot of requests from people." asking us to take a look at things, pricing, emails, things like that. And it's something that Taro and I both have always liked to do is to kind of look over things for photographers um, and give them input because I think a lot of times people get very stuck. Um, they get stuck in their own ways. They get stuck in things they think that work. And so we thought we'd try it out. You know, we, we don't know if this is something we're going to do uh, forever, but we're certainly enjoying the ones that we're doing. We did Bridget's last week while Charo was in town. And uh, <coughs> Charles gave both of us this weird plague, so our voices are a little, um, a little crazy here. Yeah. Uh, so um, basically, what we want to do is we want to go over the price list that that Josh sent us, and um, quite frankly, it's really, really good. <laughs> Just really well done. So. We yeah. uh, That's good to hear. <laughs> so. We opened it, and we were like. Come on, come on! Why? Why did you even? Why did you even enter this? You knew nothing. Clearly, wow. you're professionals. Clearly, you're a genius. Clearly, everything works. And um, you know, we're we're just going to be saying that over and over again. Um, uh, one if of, you can find one good, you know, thing that I need to improve with it. That's that's great. I mean, because I, I was talking to my friends earlier today, and and we we're just talking about this whole thing of pricing and um, one of the you know one of the big things about it is you know there's there's lots of little subliminal psychological things that go into a price sheet and if there's one little thing that just might be the tipping point you know that causes somebody to actually book with you versus not I mean that can be you know a five thousand dollar sale that's you know lost because of one little subliminal thing in your pricing sheet so I mean, well, I don't, I don't disagree that it could probably be better. So, excellent attitude, yay! <laughs> so, I think the thing that I personally was most impressed with is the um, the the uh, uh, synergy. You know, uh, your your website, your uh, pricing guide, it works together flawlessly. Everything is designed beautifully. Um, it, I can imagine that the rest of your collateral is similarly beautifully designed. Um, it all just it it's very it uh, feels very high end. It feels very modern and sleek, and uh, I was very very impressed. Very impressed with the presentation and the way that everything just fits together so beautifully. And as I'm going, I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and screen share on my side just to kind of show okay. what I'm talking about, and I will let Kim talk as well. Awesome. Okay, so while, while, while Charo pulls that up, um, Josh, what you talked about is um, there can always be things that can be improved. And at first glance, you know, after seeing quite a lot of, you know, price lists over the years, <clears throat> I thought, wow, this is really good. Mm -hmm. But then I tried to put myself in the mindset of a bride. And yeah. um, the layout is, is absolutely beautiful. And Charo, Charo will speak more to that because she's, she's got a way better eye than I do have. But the first thing that popped into my mind when I was going through the first three parts is I thought to myself, do I have to pick three? You know, you have pick one, pick two, pick three. And yeah. I thought, I wonder if you, have you had brides say to you that before or have, has that been a concern? No, and that's, that's something that I always um, go over with them. I say, 
I pretty much equate our price list to eating at a restaurant. So you can go to a restaurant and you can just order a main course if you want. And for that, um, for, for us, that's really our wedding day coverage. Um, if you want to get some appetizers, you're welcome to get engagement session, bridal, um, rehearsal dinner coverage, and then we kind of have our desserts, which is like our prints and our albums and things like that. So, I mean, when you're eating out, you're welcome to, you know, pick as many of those as you want. So I try to try to kind of explain that to people. But I do like the, the subliminalness, I guess, of pick one, pick two, pick three, because my ideal client, they're going to pick something from all three. So. Right, and if, if that's working for you, that's great. Um, now, let me ask you, let me step back just a little bit here. When you get an inquiry in, and do you send this out blind, or is this something you'll only really go over with them in person? Um, so when I get an inquiry in first, it really it really depends on the nature of that inquiry. If they're like, hey, just send me pricing, please, I'm going to hit them back with either a phone call or um, an email back just saying, hey, I need some more information about your wedding. You know, can you give me some details about the date? And that way I can more give a personalized response. I'm not just going to send it out to every single person that, that inquires with me. Um, I've been trying to kind of get away from just sending a, a blanket um, email signature where I just fill in a little bit of details. Um, in there and go to more shorter, customized kind of quicker things because I, I was talking with a good friend of mine, um, Morby Photography, um, based in Pennsylvania, and he, he brought up a really good point, um, being that pride, they're checking out their, um, they're reading their emails and responding a lot of times on an iPhone. I mean, if I send them back big, long, okay, here's a list of 30 weddings that we've shot and a link to our promo video and here's our albums and here's our prices. I mean, they're just going to go like being paralysis over the amount of information that you gave them and they're probably not going to respond till later and then, exactly. you know, and, that, and that And that's, that's really great because I think to send a price list out cold like this, you would lose a lot of people. It's a little detailed. Um, yeah. Which is great, and um, but I think if you know, I was approaching it like I said to Charo, I'm a bride and I have a five thousand dollar limit, and I want all day coverage and my files and an engagement session, and then I look and I see that your 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 very most basic package is thirty five hundred, I'm already in going to be in the mindset that I can't afford you, and that's not true once I really went through your price list, but. You know, again, kind of thinking like a bride, if you're not sending this out, that's fabulous. That answers most of my questions with that because this should not be a price list that can get in the hands of the general public without doing without them doing a little legwork. Right? Yeah, and I don't. Um, I have, I just very recently updated my FAQ on my website to even include kind of a starting price, and it's buried pretty yeah. far in. I mean, and I do that because, you know, People that are really, really interested, and you know, if they get to that, and that's really a deal breaker, then okay, you know. And I, I'm more on the conservative side with what's on the website, where you know, I put starting around three thousand, you know. And if if that scares them off, okay, great, that they're right. probably not buying, mm -hmm. you know. But if if they're okay with that, then yeah, let's talk through it, and um, yeah. Very good, and that's, you know, for anyone who's watching, that's what, you know, yes, brides want pricing, but, you know, you, you can see as you look along on the screenshot with this that, you know, uh, Josh has quite a lot of different layers to his pricing, you know, some of it includes bundling, which has discounts, and this is the kind of thing that when you have a client in front of them is going to make perfect sense to them, but if you send them to the blind in an email, yeah. They're going to look at a price list like this, and they're going to look at, at a price list from a photographer who doesn't have detailed packaging, and all they're going to see is the price differential, and they're not going to understand the difference. Exactly. So for all of you that are sending out your pricing and wondering why you're not hearing back, that's why. Mm. Exactly. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and um, talk and have have the have the pricing up. And I'm going to talk for a minute so that that's the dominant thing on the Hangout for a moment. Um, okay. And I'm going to also bring up your website as well while we while we do this. 
Um, so the first thing, uh, presumably, that your brides are going to see is this lovely website. Um, I mean, this this is. I actually think that slide should be first, but um, this <clears throat> four image uh, slide. You know, that that slide is first. It really depends on how fast they're. Because I did used to have that that South Carolina wedding photographer of the year slide first, but I noticed that a lot of brides' computers or phones that they're kind of still loading, and then it'll go by that first one. So a lot of times, the first one that you see is that that shot. Huh. That's fantastic. So yeah. um, now, you know, going right here, that mm -hmm. image, I instantly recognize that as being one of the first images from your website. Mm -hmm. And now, bam, you know, wow, that's that's completely in keeping with your website. It's um, the everything is so beautifully, uh, like I said before, synergistic. Um, it it all just fits together. The font. That background um, uh, diagonal pattern there, everything fits together. So the designer that you worked with to do this um, you, is spectacular, and you've done a really wonderful job in your branding. And I just yeah. really wanted to point that out because I have nothing that I can say. I am yeah. a very picky, picky person. The yeah. only, picky. I'm incredibly picky. Uh, the only thing that I picked out that bothers me, and it is a personal thing, is, uh, oh, I, no, stop it, I don't want you, anyway, um, that, uh, okay, that asterisk right there, I can't point at it, that asterisk right there, where you have high resolution wedding day files, uh, yep. I can't stand having any sort of footnote or asterisk uh, note at the bottom without having a reference somewhere else, yeah. so personally, I would get rid of that asterisk, that <laughs> It's an extremely nitpicky thing, um, yeah. but otherwise, I really design-wise, I couldn't find a single thing I could nitpick. Um, the only other thing was, I almost feel like a page in between this and this that was just sort of, you know, you said your work is creative and beautiful. You said you're wonderfully creative. You're the wedding photographer of the year, but you haven't really introduced yourself you know, in this pricing, okay. and mm -hmm. so one thing that I personally think, I, I, I know uh, what happens with, with us, for instance, with my husband and myself, we work together, is that people will get the price list, they'll stop looking at the website, you know, they, they, they just, they get the pricing, I've got pictures in our pricing as well, they stop looking at our website, and now they're focused on the price list and our emails back and forth or our phone conversations back and forth. And so at that point, now they're starting to ask me questions that are already there on the website. They've forgotten. They've looked at yeah. different photographers' websites. They've yeah. landed on these last three, but they're really just comparing pricing at that point or they're just you know trying to figure out their budgets. So I've repeated a lot of information in our pricing that is on our website. Not all of it, just a little bit. So, you know, right here between those two pages, I would suggest yep. adding a page that just said, you know, when you work with us, this is what it's like. When you're looking at this pricing, this is what, you know, this is what you can expect. Um, most of our, you know, most of our couples like to have this complete package, you know, da, 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 you know, but kind of introduce it in a way so that it's, it's not that kind of abrupt, you know, <laughs> bam, here's our pricing. Not that, yeah. not that that's bad. It's not bad. Your 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 design is wonderful, and I love it. But that's the only thing that I would suggest uh, adding to it, honestly. Yeah, and I have the same professional designers um, as kind of a, a design marketing team. They did my website. They did my business cards. They did my pricing guide. Um, they really did. They did the logo. They did everything really top to bottom, and and we spent a good amount of money on. On it, but um, <laughs> and you I can tell, you can yeah. tell, it's it's wonderful. Yeah, and I didn't want to. Uh, a lot of photographers' websites, you look at them and you're like, wow, this person could be starting at two thousand. They could be starting at four thousand. They could be starting at eight thousand. I have no idea, but I wanted to just by the look and feel of kind of everything that we offer, kind of 
have that high end feel so that when you go to my website, you don't have to read that, oh, we start at 3,500 or wherever. It's kind of implied that you're probably going to be investing a little bit more. Um, so I just wanted to kind of higher end feel um, to all of our things. So I'm glad you're, you're kind of sensing that too. That's, that's really good to hear. So, and yeah, we've there, been, yeah, go ahead. There's no doubt. When we went to your website right away, Charo and I both could tell that you were targeting the higher end bride. There's, there, your branding is very clear start to finish with that, which is you did an excellent job with that. Um, yeah. So with that, uh, explain your process to me a little bit a little bit more going back to one of the sheets in your price list where you the extras page where you talk about uh, yeah. frame gallery prints and things like that do you do in-person sales with most of your clients not so that's so you probably picked up the one <laughs> thorn in my side when it comes <laughs> to selling well, and things like that um, that that is probably the worst part I just kind of list them in there and I don't really have a great way of kind of selling those to the bride and the groom. I mean, I do a Zenfolio gallery afterwards. Um, I send out a 20% off uh, coupon that's good for two weeks after their wedding is up just to kind of help get the ball rolling, stuff like that. Um, but okay. no, I don't, I don't invite them over, you know, with a big projector and all that and... That's okay. I mean, that, and that's something probably it's a, probably we're getting into a little bit too much for for this critique. And that's something um, I would like to personally talk about is doing in person sales for weddings. Um, I'm just starting to do it myself, so I'm a newbie. Um, but honestly, if you don't do that, I I would be inclined to take that out of your price list. It's not selling anything to people. Um, it's a little bit of useless fodder because, first of all, they can't even imagine buying a wall print when they're first starting to think about hiring you for their wedding. So, I mean, if you were to replace, you know, take Charles' advice and replace that second page, maybe move that back page, that great picture with you and your wife, up before the pricing so they get to know you a little bit more. I could see you removing that page because I just don't think it really adds anything to the price list. Oh, I felt, and it's. I used to have it as a step four, but then I just I kind of dropped that wording because really you have no idea, you know, that you want a wall print or you want to, you know, loose prints or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. but I don't I don't know how else, you know, if I had a question from a client saying, oh, you know, we're thinking of getting some prints and stuff for the reception, how much are they? I mean, then I'm gonna have to send them another email, another sheet. So it's kind of I don't know. Yeah. Uh, by that time, they've lost that original email with the price list anyway. They don't know where it is. So, you know, I, I resend the exact same things to clients countless times. Yeah. 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 So, I get nitpicky, but, you know, if you were looking for a way to tighten up the price list a little, that would be one, one thing I would think you would lose without, without it impacting your sales at all. That's that's something that when I when I meet with people in person and I print this out, I actually do take that page out of it. Yeah. Um, just cause it, it makes the whole thing just a little bit thinner, and it doesn't, you know. Well, that tells you right there. Also, say you did decide to go into in person sales. So, say you made that jump, and then you've got that old priceless flight floating out there with somebody and you've upped your gallery wraps $100 and they say, well, what about, you know, the one client that actually saves something is going to pull that sucker out and you're going to be like, yeah, all right, you know. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm a big proponent of less is more with clients. Um, I don't, I talk in very general terms until it comes to the sale part because I don't talk about my Queensberry albums. I talk about the fine art albums that I sell. I don't use words that let them know any sort of branding beyond what they need to know because I never know. You know, I mean, album companies come and go. They go out of business or they piss me off because they do something in their customer service. So I don't ever want to be locked into anything. And I think by looking pricing for something that they're not even talking about, it's just mm -hmm. a paranoia of mine that I'm going to get locked in somehow, you know. So I'll take yeah. that for yeah, well, I'd love to hear more about the in-person for wedding sales because I've I've tried it a couple times and it's just I know that's not the topic today, but it's, it's, a, not. it's a lot of work. And I, like I said, I've just learned about it myself and delved into it. So um, this is going to be a learning, a learning year for it. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. it doesn't. It's not going to work for everybody. Ninety percent of our clients 
don't live anywhere near North Carolina, so you know we we don't problem too. So, yeah, exactly. I would imagine. I mean, you're shooting a lot in Asheville. You're shooting a lot in. I'm I'm presuming like Charleston. And, you and know, we last weekend and they're yeah. all destinations. And for us too, you know, Bald Head Island. <laughs> they don't live there. They don't live anywhere near there. So. No. Um, you know, we don't we don't really have that opportunity to do in person sales. Not that I would be excited to do them, if, uh, yeah. if we did have that opportunity. It's something that scares the pants off of me. I don't want to do them, um, yeah. so I am in that camp squarely. I and I like my work, just it would kill her. We did we did forty three weddings last year. I can't do. Yeah. I can't yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. So. And, 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 and exactly, and um, I, and there's there's a part, and I think that there's a part of, of most people who still look at this job as being, you know, an art, as being this this passion, this this creativity, instead of, you know, being more of a business. That you know, when you do in person sales, you're really ruining the integrity of what you do. You're really, you know, you're taking it, you're kind of bastardizing it, you're turning it into this, you know, money making thing. And you know, that's not true. You're actually helping your clients. You know, um, get the the products that they probably do want, and they just don't even know are out there. Uh, yeah. When I have, I've never really done in person sales, but when I have talked to clients about, you know, gosh, you, you want this, you want this thing, and and you know, you got this wall in your bedroom, and blah blah blah. I've even you know visited them at home and um, figured out what we could do for them. Years later, they've thanked me for doing that. You know, they've thanked me for letting them spend fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars extra on top of what they've already spent. So it it's not the horrible thing that I think we both think it is. There's yeah. there is, but there is still a part of me that's like, ah, oh, that you know, that takes the that takes the beauty out of what I'm doing. You know? well, Hire someone to sell that stuff for you, and we're gonna talk about that because and we need to I talk about that. It's it's a weirdness, but if you could still be shooting weddings and have someone else selling your art, someone who maybe would do it better than you can because they don't have your hangups, yeah. to me, no brainer. Okay, yeah. that's a good topic. Write that down. Write that shit down. We're gonna talk about that on the blog. Okay, write that shit down. <laughs> Um, okay, so anything else about the price list? Because we want to talk a tiny little bit about about your website. Um, just a, a couple things that, you know, we said we're not going to talk about pricing. Um, when we initially talked about this, and we really don't because it's so geographical. You know, um, I couldn't possibly get what you're getting for your starting rate in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, for a full day. Not even close. It's just, yeah. you know, so so for me to say, oh, you're so expensive, it makes no sense at all. Um, but there were a couple things, you know, just being in the industry for a while, um, and you you said that you, you know, you obviously when you rebranded, you were going for a more higher end clientele. You had that in your head. You wanted that three thousand dollar market starting end up. Um, mm -hmm. So when I looked through the website, the one thing that jumped out at me was your mm -hmm. retainer. It was my what? Your retainer. Your okay. eight hundred dollars. Yep. Dude, that is super low. <laughs> um, and I think probably it's a holdover from when you maybe were a little less expensive. That's what you maybe what you've always charged. Eight hundred, yeah, it's an easy number, right? For a while. Um I, I wanna personally I wanna make it as easy for them to book me as possible. Which so. is a really great idea until you have three cancellations in a year like I did last year. I'd uh, yeah, I have maybe one a year, one or two a year. Well, it will happen. It will happen. And when you lose a I'm six or seven thousand dollar commission, that yeah. eight hundred dollars is not enough to compensate you for losing your your June fourteenth date, like happened to me. Um, yeah. You half is standard in the industry. Um, Charo has never been comfortable with half. I think you do a thousand, right? Um, I've been doing a thousand. I actually just changed it to a third. Yeah. Since, uh, since payments are, you know, um, uh, re uh, retainer at booking, then you know, half of the balance at 90 days and half at 30. And one of the reasons that we did the 90 day thing was, well, number one, because of the potential for cancellations. Knock on wood, never had a cancellation, never had a single cancellation in 12 years of shooting. Um, but, and. Do you scream? Or, like, 
<laughs> I, had three, I had three last year. I've had uh, one this year. I'm good for one a year. Yeah, I've yeah. never I, had one or two a year out of 30 or 40 weddings a year. So, I mean. So, um, all it takes is one year to teach you your lesson. <laughs> But also because of all the travel that we do, I want to make sure that that 90-day payment, you know, that, that we're getting $1,500 or whatever, you know, whatever it is to cover our travel, to cover our expenses, and have mm -hmm. a cash flow also. You know, we get a lot of weddings in, in April and March and, and, you know, times of the year when um, if, you, if you count 90 days back, well, that's Christmas. That's like the slow time. So that 90-day payment is hot, and I'd also recommend putting pushing that uh, last payment, that final payment, out to 30 days, just because that two-week period, um, you know what else is due at two weeks before the wedding? The caterer, the florist, the coordinator, everybody else, and their families arriving in from out of town, and there's so much going on. If you're at 30 days, you're yeah. still far enough away from That's that. True. Yeah, and it's not so friggin' crazy. So I'd recommend that. I agree. Nothing agree. else. I so, agree. you know, and the, again, there's no right or wrongs with this, but I too do I do half down, um, half of their package. So half the package price, and then a quarter due at 90 days and a quarter day due at 30 days. Um, I If I have someone balk about that, I will split that first retainer. If, if that's too much for them to swing, I'll do... You know, quarter now and a quarter in two weeks. You know, quite frankly, if they can't pay me half the package price within a month, there's something wrong, and that's yeah. a red flag. So, um, at like maybe one or two clients a year, I'll kind of make that face when I say half, and I'll say, well, hey, you know, what can you do? What's comfortable for you? Huh. And if they say, well, could we just give you 500 now? Yeah, absolutely. As long as it's written into the contract, I'm super flexible about it. Um, okay. But you know, it sure hurts a hell of a lot less more when a, when a wedding is canceled and you've got 75% of it in your pocket rather than $800. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. But I think then you have a probably an angrier client to deal with as well. Yeah. Well, hey, sorry, 800 non-retained refundable. Do you think okay. the venue's giving her more money back? Do you think the caterer's giving her her money back? No, yeah. they're not. You know, they're not. At the same time, they might be like, wow, this photographer, whether or not it's true or not, they might be like, that photographer took three grand from me, and I didn't even get any photos, and they wouldn't give me any money back. I don't recommend them ever, you know, so. Could that happen? Uh, yes, but they could say it about the caterer, too. And you can always, I mean, and it's up to you. Hey, you feel bad for them? Go ahead and give them a half back or a quarter back or oh, yeah. Or if they if they say you know we're postponing it, you can say fine. Whatever you've paid me when you choose me your new date, we'll transfer the money, and I'm not going to charge you a fee. I mean, there's lots of different ways to do that, so don't get hung up on you being the bad guy because you're in business, dude. And you know what? If they cancel your wedding, you know people are like, oh, at least you made a thousand dollars for sitting home. Hell no, I just lost two thousand dollars. I yeah. expect. When I'm mapping out how much I'm going to make for the year, and I'm, you know, figuring out how much money I'm going to bring in, that's two thousand dollars less all of a sudden that I've got to make up. I got to hustle to make that two grand. And yes, I get it. It's sad they called off the wedding, but at the end of the day, this is what I do. Not really my problem. Exactly. Not really my problem. You know what? What I do, I I write all of our policies. Um, to to benefit us, of course, to benefit us as a business, so that yeah. we're not ever screwed. And then, yeah. on a case by case basis, you know, when somebody needed a little bit of uh, a little bit of leeway on that second payment or that final payment, or their dad just got really leery about releasing, you know, all that money before the wedding, or you know, all those things, case by case. You know, couple by couple, I can make those those uh, those. What do you call them? Allowances or whatever, um, that that you know. Then they're like, "Wow, they didn't have to do that, but look at what they did." So you know, you take a yeah. your fee up front, um, and then they they cancel the wedding, and you go ahead and you you know you're like, "Oh shit," you know that wedding's six months in the future. I know I can book it. You know, I've already had three new inquiries since they emailed me about canceling it. I'll go ahead and give them half of this retainer back. They'll be like, oh my god, he totally didn't have to do that. That guy's the most awesome dude ever and, you know, 
I'm going to yeah. tell all my friends. I'm going to tell all my friends because that's what they do. You know, try it. Bump it up to a grand and see if you have any. I, I doubt you will even have even a blink yeah. even to a grand. It just seems like a weird number for, for where you start. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Thanks. But I, I can't do, the way I have my pricing set up, I can't do a percentage because... People don't know what they're spending with me until a month or two out. Um, I tell people they're, you know, you can, you know, cause most people are meeting with me a year out, you know, eight months out, and they have no idea, you know, if they want, you know, an engagement session or not, or a bridal or not, or, you know. You know, you know for a fact, you know for a fact that they're going to be spending at least $3,350 with you. Right? I do know that. Okay. Yep. So, and you know that they might go ahead after giving you that $800 retainer, they might go ahead and be like, oh, and I want a bridal and I want an engagement and I want yep. an engagement signature book. And now you've added all that to their package, but you still only have 800 bucks. Well, far before that two week, you know, final payment, you're going to give them a $350 engagement session and a bridal session and a signature book. And you're going to, you know, give them more than $800 worth of services. If they sure on you. You're yeah, not um, out that future income, but you're also out all that time and money that you put into them already. They yeah. all they did was pay you for for that. You didn't even get a retainer. So that's so you know they might not know and what, what I what I have done in the past and, and it does sound kind of complicated but it actually has worked. Clients have never pushed back on it is when they decide that oh I want to add this to my package. I'm like okay that's cool so we're gonna go ahead and um, add that to your package. I'm gonna take half you know half of, of it now to add that to your package so they want to add a $350 portrait session alright 175 now add that to your retainer and that way you're <laughs> it's, it's almost paid for if they decide that they want to cancel you know they want to change things later whatever I've at least gotten paid for you know a little bit of time that I put into it. So it's it's just one of those things. Think about I hate to be the negative Nelly, but think about the worst case scenario. You know the way that you can get hurt the most because um, yep. you know there's there's you are riding high right now. You are doing very well, and your website shows it. Your work is beautiful. Um, yep. You're shooting a lot of weddings. People clearly yep. like you a lot. You're getting a lot of good referrals. But, you know, that might change. Yeah. So think about all the ways that you can get screwed and mm -hmm. your policies, you know, like, so that it hurts less. Yeah. But it happens. Very yeah. true. Yeah. Cool. You never know. Awesome. That, that was the only thing I noticed on the website, Charity. I mean, we Not, it, you know, it's really well laid out, Josh. It's, it's beautiful. You obviously... You know, yeah. and, I, and I and I give you props. Um, year eight, you know, that's a good amount of years in, um, but still, you know, you know, you're 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 still under ten years, so you're still new-ish. Um, but the fact that you recognize the value of, of spending good money on branding means that you understand you understand what it's like to be in it for the long run. Yep, yeah, absolutely. On your on your contact form on your page on your website, the connect with us on Facebook. There's no link. It doesn't. It doesn't actually work. You have to go up to the to the big F on the upper right hand side of your. That, that's that's it. Right. I mean, that's the, that's the only thing. <laughs> awesome. Well, very good. If that's the biggest problem, I guess I'm doing okay. Yeah. But you you don't have a whole lot of problems, my friend. But um, but I, we're glad we're glad you you sent it in because it you know I think it's great for people. Um, to take a look at the at the at the differences between their pricing and other people's pricing, and get an idea of what's working for people and what's not. Um, uh -huh. So, any questions that you have for us? Anything like that? No, we we did we did packages for um, seven years, and then about about a year ago, we switched over to this kind of new system of doing this kind of a la carte, and it's. We've seen our averages go up about five hundred to a thousand dollars per wedding. Um, so I and I really like it as well because you now I'm getting full price basically for everything that I'm selling. I'm not um, really bundling in a, an album that really, when you do all the math, it comes out to two hundred dollars or something like that. 
everybody's really paying full price, and there's really there's no negotiation. It, it, it just makes it really simple. And people that are out of town, it works great for them because you know now I don't have that awkward engagement set that's kind of bundled in there and what we're swapping out for. And, you know, so so I've been really happy with the color cart system. I know that's like the biggest topic in the world <laughs> between photographers on, you know, kind of your your a la carte versus your your yeah. package stuff. Um, I mean, that's uh, that's as big of a topic as you know. Should the client feed you at the wedding? So you know, you're going to get yeah, almost almost that big. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, anything is as big a topic as that. But that's 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 good to hear that works for you because you know I know I've done a la carte, I've done packages, Charles done done the same, and I think it takes you a while before you hit that kind of sweet spot. Uh -huh. um, and it's not even just you, but it's it's the way you sell things, it's the clientele that you have, and and it's your market. You kind of, you know, just because it's working for Josh in South Carolina doesn't mean it's playing in Peoria. I mean, you really have to play around and find that kind of that happy point. So. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, I don't, I don't have any big questions for you guys. Thank right. you. Uh, thank you for your time and your kind words. I appreciate that, and I definitely agree with the, you know, the things you guys brought up that I probably can't improve on too. Uh, yeah. Awesome. awesome. All right, well, we're going to wrap this up, and what's going to happen next is once we sign off, this will upload to the YouTubes. And uh, we'll make it. We'll post it on the website so that you'll have it. You can refer back to it or show your wife or whatever. Um, but we encourage you, you know, as, as as things go on, if you have questions or things, just you know, bring it up on the page. Or we also have a Facebook group. If you're not in our Facebook group, join that. Um, or if people out there have questions for Josh about his pricing, how he came to that. Please post them up. We're trying to get you know as much activity as we can on the blog, so we know what people are looking for. If you like these pricing reviews, that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, so you know the basics is is we just you know the blog, the reason why we started the blog is because we felt like we really thought there needed to be a resource out there um, that was a little more open and honest. Um, this isn't all rainbows and unicorns and uh, gazebos and you know all those pretty things that weddings are. So you know. Um, our tagline is helping photographers stay sane, happy, and profitable, and that's what we're hoping to do. Yeah, cool. So thanks, Josh. All right, thank you, guys. Appreciate right. it. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.